and uh, welcome to uh, Jim and Lydia's Hiawatha. Uh, my goal here is to just kind of demonstrate a little bit about using JMRI to uh, set up to set up uh, signaling. Of course, mine are completely custom. Uh, I recommend that you spend a little time up front and study your signals better than I did. Uh, I found a nice guy, a nice company that uh, provided me a nice product, uh, but they, I was naive and asked them to help me too soon, and uh, I didn't get prototypical signals. Um, I got nice signals, and they work, but I've had to do all custom coding for it. Um, my goal, though, is to show you a little bit about using JMRI and signals. Um, a lot of what I do applies directly to using the, the built-in prototypical signals that JMRI has. And their help for that is pretty good. Um, I just thought it would be interesting to have a video that goes into a little detail. Uh, and I like to start with the finished product. Here you can see before you is the, the layout of, of my uh, uh, Hiawatha table. It's a 5 by 10 table, not real large but busy. Uh, I use that uh, uh, JMRI coupled with CMRI and the uh, Lens Express Mint to control things. Uh, I use as much as possible all the built-in features of JMRI, but I did have to build some custom icons um, because I used some, some different signals than the prototypes that were provided. I went to the JMRI group on Yahoo, uh, and basically I sent them this, this picture of the layout and uh, got feedback that uh, CSX 1998 was probably the best ones to start with, but I would have to customize them. Uh, I'll go into a little bit more on the customizing of my icons and another, another layout. This is just to um, introduce the whole idea to you. As you can see, I have my block detectors working. Over here, I have a train sitting in this block, so um, everybody knows it's there. Uh, with this switch thrown, you can see my little dwarf on this siding is set to uh, approach. So this any train that happened to be in here could come out. Okay, because this switch is thrown, uh, any switch switch that a train that's eastbound would be rail if it hit that. So the signal for that is red over red. It stops. There is no path uh, established for that train to travel. So you stop that train. Going uh, uh, going west, I think I told you that train was going west, but actually it was going east. So over here going west, uh, you can see that I have a different signal setting here. Uh, while my red line is shown as, as uh, stop, I do have a medium approach indicating to this train that there's a turnout route available uh, and that somewhere along this route he's going to be turned out. So if you follow it along, you'll see that this switch is, is clear or closed so it passes straight through. But here's where he turns out and turns down into the siding. So now if I throw the switch, You'll see the signals update. You'll see that the train headed eastbound now has a uh, clear signal for the main line. Uh, the uh, westbound train has a, an approach signal on the main line. That's because uh, while this block is clear, the next block is occupied. So the train needs to approach with understanding that it may need to stop. I think that's a pretty good I, uh, overview of the layout, and now we can get into some of the details in the, in the next video as to how this was all accomplished. 